dragons it's Alyssa and you're watching pages in ink today I'm going to continue my series book toast or book roast and I will be reviewing the cruel prince by Holly black going into this book I didn't know much I did know that there was a lot of polarizing views some people absolutely love this book and it was one of their favorite reads of the year others despised this book and didn't understand why it was getting so much hype the story follows a human girl named Jude and her sisters and they get brought to the land of fairy where they are raised by the High King's general Jude's older sister Vivi or Vivian is part fairy so she kind of belongs but her and her twin sister Taryn are humans and in that world you're bullied or you're a servant or a slave so Jude finds herself on the lower end of the social totem pole and is working really hard to not only become a part of this world but become better than a lot of the other fairies in this world the fairies aren't what you would picture. They're not like Tinkerbell. They're dark and disturbing and enjoy bloodshed and pain and they like to torture humans. But because the general is her guardian, she is sort of protected, but she still deals with a lot of bullying and danger and threats on her life. Because of Jude's protection, she would have an easier time rising through the ranks, except for the fact that the youngest prince, Cardin, stands in her way and is one of her biggest bullies. So not only does she have to stand up to the entire fairy world and prove that she is worthy of being a part of their court and their world, but she also has to prove to Cardin and herself that she is better than what he says she is. So out of the reviews that I watched, I know a lot of people weren't big fans of Jude if they didn't like this book. She is power hungry, she's a little bit manipulative, she's definitely violent, and kind of has the emotional capacity of a spoon. Her first response to anything is anger and that can get a little bit annoying. For the first half of this book, I wasn't a big fan of hers. I saw her motivation though. Anyone can relate. If you've been told that you're less than, that you're not good enough, that you don't have enough to offer, people respond in different ways. And one of those ways is to not only prove to yourself that you belong, but to prove to everyone else that you're better than them. I know from firsthand experience when people tell me that I can't do something just because they have it in their head that I can't do it, I want to prove them wrong. Um, one of those things was actually starting this channel. So I could understand her motivations. I just didn't like how kind of unhinged she was at some points. And I didn't like how she had her sisters but isolated herself and made herself kind of battle this alone. I didn't like her twin sister Taryn. I'm going to read that little novella that was put out that is from her point of view, but I didn't like her at all. I didn't think that there was enough development on her side. And the fact that there has to be a novella from her point of view proves that her character wasn't as flushed out as some of the others. I just didn't like her. Prince Cardin was probably my favorite character in this story. He kind of reminded me of Draco Malfoy and Draco is definitely a character that I have grown to love as an adult. As a kid, I hated his guts, but as an adult, now that I can see his motivations and kind of put myself in his shoes with his family, I totally understand some of the stuff that he did. But even like the hoity-toitiness and the arrogance and the racism of Draco Malfoy was found in Cardin. I, I'm pretty sure they even described him as having like a pointy face. So I just pictured Draco the whole time as a fairy and it just made me love him. Now I will say for the first half of this book I was prepared to give it a three star rating. It was long and I felt like I was just reading basically the same thing over and over and over again. 
There was a weird love triangle in this book that didn't make any sense and was stupid and pointless that I wish wasn't in this book either. I hate that trope, especially if it's useless like this one. There was no point in it. I think it was just to make the story longer, and I didn't, I don't like that. I also found when I, when I was reading the first half of this book specifically that it fell into the trap of a lot of young adult fantasy and fantasy stories where it's written like it's Victorian England and the dialogue can be a little bit jarring and a little over the top and pulls you out of the story and it definitely did that to me. It just made it a lot harder for me to get into. Obviously there's going to be like their own vernacular and culture and all of those things but I honestly felt like it was a little over the top as far as the dialogue goes and even the way that some of it's written. It did intrigue me. I kept coming back to this book. When I wasn't reading it I kept thinking about it even though I was totally prepared to give it that three stars. I just, there was something about it that just kept drawing it, me back in. And then I hit probably 120 pages to the end of the book and it felt like a completely different book, to be honest. The first half felt like almost like a love story set in a fantasy land and then the second half was bloody and violent and awesome and fast paced and kept me on my toes. I did kind of figure out by the end what the plan was, but that was okay because I loved seeing it play out. But the way that the second half of this book was written, I loved reading it and I stopped focusing on all the little things that annoyed me. So in the beginning, I've said it before, I was prepared to give it three stars, but having read all of it, I can look back and see why the first half was the way that it was. So overall, I gave this book five out of five stars, mostly because I was so sucked in that I didn't even want to do my homework. I just wanted to focus on reading and I kind of locked myself in my bedroom so I could finish the book. And some people watching this video can vouch for it. I read on my lunch breaks and once I hit that like half halfway mark where it goes from like a little silly love story in fantasy land to like a Game of Thrones kind of situation. I went back to work and was like, oh, I gotta read this right now. And I just kept talking about it for the rest of the day. And I went home and finished it because I literally was making this face while I was reading it. Again, I love Cardin. He's like a fairy Draco Malfoy. I can understand why Jude is the way that she is. I just really enjoyed it and I want to know what happens next. I will pick this up again. I recommend this to people. I can definitely see why people didn't like it, but I loved it. So five out of five stars to The Cruel Prince and five out of five stars to Holly Black for writing this. I can't wait to read The Wicked King. And until next time, remember to be nice to yourself and be kind to others.